Hi, this is Shane, and welcome back to another episode of Cuboid Outpost. And I've been a little bit busy. Not much, but a little bit. Had some time on my hands, and I was doing some of the miscellaneous stuff behind the scenes. You know, little, some couple of little side quests. Are you all... Why is it when you get hit with the, the stuff, the... The love stuff, you jump up in the air. Does love make, does seeds make you jump? Do I need to put something there to stop you from jumping over? Anyway, um, you've kind of gotten in the way of my introduction. I don't like how high they jump. Are they trying to jump over? We'll see if they get out. Anyway, I digress. Um, who we haven't dealt with yet. Um, I did a few things behind behind the scenes. Has everybody been zapped? How high are these animals jumping? I think you've all been zapped. Pigs. I need more than three. Um, oh, I've lost my train of thought. Yeah, I made changes. I put extended the parts out so I don't have to keep jumping over the water. Um, oh, I finished. I finished the seeds. Finished the seed quest. Potatoes. Some potatoes to feed the pigs. No. That's what I did. I finished, finished the plants. Well, I finished the seeds. I now have all of however many seeds. There you go. Have a look, see? It's looking very beautiful. Actually, let me put hover back on. And we can have a look, see? It's looking very... I left these just in case I need to grow more stuff. But this patch over here, I'm going to convert it to where we have to grow the trees. Because we have to start on the trees now. You have five base trees i'll show that in a minute five base trees and then um all the other trees are grown from those like you did with the seeds so that again is going to be something i do offline right let's take the hover off um what else did i do i didn't really do oh let me put these back because i keep the wheat and stuff outside for the for the animals I didn't do very much because all the major stuff I want to do on camera. Um, yeah, so everything now is stored. I made some extra, I made some cabinets so that we've, they're all connected to the multi-block and we have space. I might take out this window. Yeah, I might take out the window if I don't have enough space. Hello, Mr. Creeper. You can't get me, though. And, um, yeah, every time I come up, I'm like this, and I just look in this direction, and I keep thinking, that's a creeper. I think we can... Oh, we went downstairs. Never mind. Um, I added some more power here. I don't know if it makes a difference with this. Because once... Oh, there's no power in it at all. It's still trying. Yeah, it's still trying. I think we're going to... Well, we've got plenty. Right, let's take you out. Oh, no. Let's take out what's there. Right. Let's leave that. So, we have loads, but we need to upgrade. But I also want to do auto crafting on on um AE2. That was what the mattock, right? Yeah. I on, I also want to do auto crafting. I think we need auto crafting more than we need the power stuff. Because once we auto craft, once we get the auto crafting up and running, then the power is going to be a lot easier. If that makes sense. Yeah. So, there is a quest for auto crafting. I didn't, I hadn't noticed, 
Um, shout out to Pilpo for finding that out. I was watching his video and he found it out by accident because I would not have noticed. So thank you. Um, let's see, where was it? It was under digital applied energetics. So they taught, they have pictures of how you can set up your auto crafting system. And, um, yeah, so now it talks about what else you can do with your ME system. As you remember, I'm a noob with this, so we're going to be learning. Or, well, I don't know about we, you probably know more than I do, but I'm going to be learning. So you're joining me for this journey. So this appendix entry aims to tell you just enough to get you going, and hopefully you'll be able to do some amazing things with this technology, as in the ME system. What does ME mean? Hmm. Okay, kindly provided to you by Cuboid Core trademark and our affiliate Algorithm by Two at Applied Energistics. <laughs> All right, so we got that. Um, combine connecting with fiber. Oh, uh, oh, these are where these extra things were coming up. Okay, quartz fiber is used for multiple purposes. All right, so you can use. It allows power to be transferred between ME cables without connecting the data channels. Okay, so we made some of those. We get extra. Cable anchor can be used to stop cables from automatically connecting to a machine or other cable. Okay. Well, I've been using it to make facades. That's okay. And the glass cables are entry-level cables. Yeah, we know that. Well, I know that. And they only carry eight channels, which means only eight devices can be connected to a particular one of run of Fluix crystal. Okay, so one channel, one device. If I add nine channels, I'd have to have an adv advanced cable, I guess? Because the extra channels wouldn't work. Okay. All right, uh, we don't have to worry about channels. So what's this now? Covered cable. These are essentially the same as Fluix ME glass cables, except they're less flashy. Okay. The cables can also be coloured. Using dye to keep your cable runs tidy. They will only connect to other cables of the same colour or the uncoloured version. Alright, well we can do that. I think. Understanding channels. Oh, it's wall of text. Right, let's... What's this side? Oh, the cores. We made some. The heart of the process, the annihilation and formation cores. You've already made some, but you're going to need more if you'd like to automate some if crafting using your ME system. All right, I think this branch is the way that we need to go right now if we want to do auto, if I want to learn about auto crafting. And then I can do that. All right, so we've made cores before. You've seen me make cores. So let me go and make some stuff. So yeah, we're going to need processors. We're gonna need processors. So let me go and make a stack of each. I should have done that yesterday <laughs> instead of finishing the seeds, but I didn't think about it because you know me, I don't really plan ahead that much. So let me go make a stack of each processor and then I will be back. Okay, just made a stack of the three processors. So let's make two annihilation cores and two formation cores. Cause the cause of the matter. <laughs> the dad jokes don't stop coming. Okay, the heart of the digital storage solution um, lies a dirty little secret. The things you put in are completely annihilated. The matters are essentially destroyed and converted into energy, which is then encoded digit digitally. And then taking something out of storage means reading the encoded data, building an energy stream, then using that to form the matter again. Okay. Right, so we've got more of those. How many did we? Okay, we got six of each. 
we got quite a lot of the other stuff that we needed as well. Um, the cables and stuff, I think we ended up with a full complement of cables, which was good. Um, what are we doing? Right, is that... So, an Emmy import bus can be attached to any block with an inventory. Right, that I've already done. Right. And it will retrieve items from the inventory it is attached to and add them to your system's digital storage. Naturally, the import bus must be hooked up to your ME network with some form of ME cable. It is not recommended you attach an ME import bus to something that produces items infinitely or you're likely to end up running out of space. So that means that, no, but these have got a void upgrade, so then they're not infinitely producing. It's getting to the limit and then voiding the rest. That should be okay. Okay, right, so the import bus... And we take, is that the import bus? That's a storage bus. Okay. Can be attached. All right, so what's the difference between the import? Oh, that's, that's the, Im, that's to, well, that's to import things. Okay, so that's what I would need. So if I wanted a dump chest to go and dump things into and then put it into my system, then I could use the import bus. Okay, right. So let's make one of those. That's a fluid. Okay. Icky piston. We're probably going to need another one if we're going to make any other buses. Okay, two sticky pistons and import bus. And I'm assuming they're going to want an export bus as well. Yes. So an export bus can be attached to any block. And it can be configured to export specific items from your ME system. But a good example of when to use an export bus would be to provide a, met a metallurgic infuser with a constant supply of redstone. Okay, adding a crafting card to an export bus will allow it to automatically request crafts. Okay. The export's taking it out, import is putting it in, which is logical. But I swear some some of these mods have it backwards. Or maybe I'm just thinking it backwards. I don't know. Oh, we just need a piston, not a sticky piston. <sighs> See, when you try to, to, you know, you try to be proactive. You try to be proactive and it doesn't want you to be. See, I thought I'd need another sticky piston. No, I don't. So this is the export, export, because we're exporting it out of the system. All right, so we get some of those. Blank pattern. They can be encoded in an ME pattern terminal. Crafting recipe, encoding patterns are just the recipe using the crafting grid and a processing recipe and they contain the inputs to send to a machine, which is the same as refined storage, basically. When creating patterns, the toggle button to the right of the pattern grid allows switching between crafting recipes, the crafting table icon, and processing recipes, the furnace icon. Okay. Um, Alright. Craft. Hold on. I didn't see what we need to make. Blank pattern. Okay. We have all of that stuff. Was that quartz glass? It was. There's quite a few things we need to automate once we get this up and running. I made it. Oh, what are we missing? Oh, we need to make the ME interface. Okay. Uh, the ME interface, your most important ally. No real difference between the block form and the slimline form. In block form, it can connect to other blocks. Okay. So we need an ME interface. And it wants both. Can you switch back and forth? ME interface. So we have, if we click on that, okay, you can turn it into, oh, and you can turn it back and forth, which is excellent. All right. And we get an interface terminal. Brilliant. We've made the blank pattern. Yeah, pattern terminal. Molecular assembler. Where crafting recipes are constructed. Each molecular assembler can do a single craft at a time. It's possible to share assemblers between multiple ME interfaces. 
So then if you want to do 10 recipes, you need 10 molecular inter molecular interfaces. Do we need quartz glass for this? I probably don't have any. Yes, you do need quartz glass. How many do we need to make? Just one. All right. Quartz glass, that gives us four. Uh, we need a crafting table. Can we make a stack of crafting tables? Actually, I don't want to make a stack. Let's make ten. I always find that we need crafting tables for stuff, though, so we'll see. All right, so we've got one. You get four to sixteen. And the ME storage bus. That is that. Yes. But we'll probably need another one so we can make it. That's awesome. All right, so we get storage buses as well. Okay, the storage bus allows you to connect external inventories, which I found uh, which I found out. Um, a common use for this is when you have storage drawers containing lots of items and you don't want to flood your digital system. What you would do in this instance is connect the storage bus to the drawer controller or the drawer controller slave, and that will allow you to treat the drawers as part of the storage system. Oh, a priority can be set to specify whether things should be stored in the external storage before being stored in the ME system. Filters, partitions, can only be applied to allow certain items to be possessed, accessed, and the direction can be set to bidirectional, insert only, or extract only. When attaching storage drawers, it's a good idea to set the drawers with a higher priority that they're used first. Okay. Well, that I did not know. So... There's the import bus, priority, the storage bus, insertion. All right. Right. I think that's correct. The drawers with a higher priority than your drives that they used first. Okay. I, th I think that's correct. I think that's correct. All right. Um, so we've done that. And now a crafting unit. A crafting unit is, offers no functionality of its own, but it can be used either as a filler block or as a crafting ingredient. Okay, to allow a crafting CPU, what's a craft? Oh, the crafting unit is a crafting CPU. No, the crafting CPU is the multi-block structure. The crafting unit is part of that structure. That makes sense. Okay, crafting unit. I've co-processing. Guessing, all right, we get back some of those. Co-processing, okay. Crafting unit, engineering. Let's make another crafting unit. And then do that. And the crafting storage, they want 1K. Okay, so we've done that. And we get back some. Storage monitor. And the last bit is the crafting monitor. Okay, so then we could turn around. All right, let me make the cables and make the crafting storages offline. Complete the app, complete the quest line, and then have a look at how we can put it all together. Okay, I'm back for the final bit, just making dense smart cable. Why no noise? Oh. Why didn't we have a noise? What have we missed? I haven't missed anything. Oh. Understanding channels. Oh yes, because I said wall of text and didn't want to, um, um, normal circumstances, you have to work with channels and you're just starting out, we've disabled the channels. Smart cables will only show the number of channels that would be used. Okay, I, yeah, yeah, I would have to sit down and think about that one. All right, so we finished that. That talks about multi-crafting. 
and how to set it up well not how to set it up but just what you need and I've done that and it's given different configurations but it doesn't really um, explain like it did with the the XNet system it didn't explain like it did with the XNet system so I'm going to have to go off and have a little bit of a watch of stuff and then decide what I'm going to do and how I'm, oh I've got 31 patterns okay nice and how I'm going to set it up because I think what I'm going to have to do what I'm going to have to do is go behind here and make a room I think oh you know what I can do while I'm here on camera because I'm going to do that off camera I'm going to do that between episodes because it's going to take me a while to get my head around it um silk touch thing I can do that now on my pickaxe I hadn't done it yet uh there is my pickaxe uh, can I put silk touch on this and I want the silky gems yeah pierce damage I have no idea what that means but I can put silk touch and now I should be able to take out go here yes and get the ore finally right um and also you can see how I've set out set up the um behind here so basically what i did was have a trap door to this so when you open the trap door it would make you drop down and then i could go under the, under um behind the drawers and set everything up work backwards so then i would work out and then stand back up again so so there's that so i think i'm going to hollow out a room behind here uh, we'd have to make it three high. I might actually make an ex not an excavator, a mining hammer. That's three, one, two, three, yeah. I'm gonna make a mining hammer. I'm not gonna No, we don't need to make a mining hammer. Because we can use silk touch we've got silk touch on this. We can use um Ultamine. Hold down shift while you do that. And we want a mining tunnel. So let's just go. That's one, two, three. Let's go one across. And then across. So start from here. We want to start from here. There you go. And then I don't need. It'd light up in here though otherwise it'll be mob city and then that's where our system comes down that's awesome uh, torch hopefully nothing spawns behind there while i'm frantically looking for torches uh, the, the, the hoe can go there for now no and of course, I didn't count to see whether it was going to be <laughs> square, but that's okay. But yeah, I'm going to make this. I'm going to make this room off camera. I'm going to sit down, watch some videos and see if I can set up something. And looking at my clock, it's about time for me to stop recording anyway. So I'm going to do that. And then next episode, we will keep going with this and we'll look at setting up some auto crafting and getting certain. See if we can work out with the patterns, if it's as, as simple as it is with, um, with refined storage. Although refined storage isn't that simple, to be honest. Uh, this is where we want the magnet.
yeah, refined storage isn't that simple. But you understand what I mean. I mean, refined storage is pretty much, you know, you can you can get into that. This is a bit more nuanced, I guess. I don't know. Although now I'm getting into it. it seems to be quite interesting. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, I'll do this between episodes. I will be back in the next episode. So thanks very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. It really helps to grow this channel. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye bye.